if you add two fractions that have similar looking denominators, but one of them is the square of the other. Well, in order to multiply these, you would need to make a common denominator, which means for one of the two fractions, the one that only has the single x plus 1 factor, not the squared x plus 1 factor, we would need to multiply by x plus 1 over x plus 1, which means we'd be distributing that 5. So we would actually end up with a linear, I'm going to add the 5 and the 3 now, a linear um, numerator over that quadratic denominator. What that means for us, because what we're going to be doing here is working backwards, is if you ever have an x plus 1 squared or any repeated factor in the denominator, in order to figure out where that came from, we have to take into account the possibility that there might have been one fraction from the original sum, where it came from, that only had the single x plus 1 factor. So what that means to us, continuing with our partial fraction decomposition, is if we're trying to figure out where 3x plus 9 over x plus 1 squared came from, what we're going to need to do is work backwards, but we're going to need to account for the fact that 3x plus 9 over x plus 1 squared could have come from one uh, fraction with x plus 1 in the denominator added to another fraction with x plus 1 squared in the denominator. We need to account for both regular x plus 1 and also x plus 1 squared. But once we write that out, solving it is exactly like what we did in our previous um, examples with partial fractions. You're going to multiply both sides by x plus 1 squared. So for the first fraction, we have to actually multiply by x plus 1. Um, we have to distribute that a to x plus 1, because only one of the x plus 1s will cancel out. In the second fraction, both x plus 1s will cancel out. And just let me be clear what I mean when I say both x plus 1s. A reminder from Algebra 2, what we're doing to get this denominators cleared is multiplying both sides by x plus 1 squared. On the left hand side that just completely cancelled. On the right hand side that when we distributed the x plus 1 squared to the first term only one of the x plus 1's cancelled. When we distribute it to the second term both x plus 1's cancelled. Okay. Uh, so now what we're going to need to do is figure out what our a and our b are equal to. We're going to use a similar strategy as before. We'll pick a value for x uh, that will make one of the, uh, that will zero out one of the constants so we can solve for the other. So we see this factor here of x plus 1, which means if x was negative 1, that factor in there would zero out. So we're going to let x equal negative 1 and plug everything in. That's negative 3 uh, plus 9, 6, equals a times 0, that was the whole point, plus b. Well, that was easy. b equals 6. To figure out the a, though, it's a little bit less obvious. We look at that and we're like, wait, how do I make b disappear? There's no 0 next to it. And the answer is, I don't need to make b disappear. I just figured out that b has to be equal to 6. So I could just plug in a 6 there. I can pick any number I want for x to be. I'm going to choose the easiest one I can think of, which is 0. Because our whole point is that 3x plus 9 has to equal a times x plus 1 plus b, no matter what x is. So I'll pick an easy number for x. So 3 times 0 plus 9 has to equal a times 0 plus 1, that's just 8 times 1, plus b, which we now know is 6. And so that means that a has to be equal to 3. And so our original integral can be rewritten as uh, 3 over x plus 1. Make sure we're careful that it's the a that goes over the x plus 1 by itself. 
plus 6 over x plus 1 squared in respect to x. And now we have integrals that we can work with. Um, the two integrals are going to be integrated differently, though. So let me separate them. The integral of 3 over x plus 1 in respect to x plus the integral of 6 over x plus 1 squared in respect to x. And remember, we're allowed to do that because we're always allowed to break up sums. The integral of a sum is equal to the sum of the integrals, so we can do this. The first one, hopefully we've seen enough times you recognize, oh, that's just x plus 1 in the denominator. That's just a natural log. Not 3 times the natural log of the absolute value of x plus 1. Um, the next one is a little bit less obvious. Be careful here. It's tempting to think natural log, but natural log is only the antiderivative of 1 over x. We basically have 1 over x squared. Well, if it helps, we can rewrite that as x plus 1 to the negative 2. And because it's just a nice, simple x in there, not x squared, not a square root, nothing weird, we can just use the power rule to integrate that one. We don't need to worry about the logs at all. It's just 6 times, according to the power rule, it would be x plus 1 to the negative first times negative 1, really divided by negative 1, but that amounts to the same thing. And that would be my final answer for the antiderivative. So that is the antiderivative of 3x plus 9 over x plus 1 squared dx. The other example that you saw in your video notes, so I'll go do one example just like it, is when you have the numerator has a higher degree than the denominator. And so if you remember back to the way we approached this in Algebra 2, we learned that when you have a numerator with a higher degree than the denominator, essentially that's just some polynomial with a remainder. The polynomial part is easy to integrate. You would be able to integrate each term with the power rule. We'll get up to that in just a minute. And then integrating the denominator, we'll have to use one of our recently learned tricks, either using ln or uh, the trig substitution, or like we saw in the last example, um, negative exponents, something of that nature. Well, it depends what we, what we're, or u substitution if it works. It depends what we have when we get up to it. So let's start by doing the long division here. Um, there are ways you can do this with synthetic division. It's a little bit easier, but I want you to remember that basic simple synthetic division doesn't work if you're dividing by x squared we would have to rewrite that as linear products. And I think that's a little bit more complicated. So what I'm going to do is just jump into the long division. And it might have been a while since you saw long division. That's OK. To do long division, we write out the terms of the divisor. Sorry, this one's the dividend. x to the fourth plus 7x squared plus 2x plus 11. And we're dividing that by x squared plus 4. Um, notice how I did save a spot for that x cubed in case it comes up. It actually won't in this case, but sometimes it does, so I like to leave a space there in case I need room for x cubed. And then we'll do the long division. For those of you who um, don't really remember this because it's been a long time since you saw it, the quick reminder is first you divide, then you multiply, then you subtract keep doing that until you've got no more space. So the first thing we're going to do is divide x to the fourth divided by x squared is x squared. And I'm going to make sure to line up that terms. And then I'm going to multiply x squared times x squared plus 4. I'm basically distributing this x squared to that. And that is x to the fourth plus 4x squared. And then I will subtract. And that gives me the x to the fourths cancel out, and we're left with 3x squared. And I'll bring down whatever's left here, 2x plus 11, and start all over again. 
divide, multiply, subtract. So I'm going to divide 3x squared divided by x squared is just 3. So that's going to go in my top row. And then I'm going to multiply the 3 times the x squared plus 4. That's 3x squared uh, plus 12. And then subtract. This will be the last piece here. I'm going to subtract and see that my remainder, remember the 2x, if I'm not subtracting anything from it, it's still 2x times 1. And that's my remainder. So what we're going to look at here is the integral of x squared plus 3 plus 2x minus 1 over x squared plus 4 in respect to x. And two of those terms are very easy to integrate. All right, we can integrate the x squared super simply. That's x cubed over 3. Integrating 3 is very easy. That's plus 3x. Integrating the next thing, the fraction, like we saw in the example with the quadratic factor and the denominator, we're going to have to split up this fraction into two. U sub, you might be tempting to say, oh, U sub, it's so close. I've got an x squared there and a 2x in the numerator, but I can't separate that 2x from the minus 1, at least not with U substitution. So what I'm going to do, because I want to be able to do U substitution with that 2x, is actually separate it out into two completely different integrals. And now I will be able to use u substitution for the first one. So if we set that up here, we can see that the u substitution would be, if we use x squared plus 4 as my u, the du is 2x dx. And so this becomes the integral of du over u. I'm going to give myself a little bit more space here. So we still have the x cubed over 3 plus 3x. And I'm turning using u substitution to turn that 2x dx into the integral of du over u. And, well, you know, I'm going to do substitution on the other one too. Um, hopefully, we've seen this enough times recently, we can recognize 1 over x squared plus 4. Our strategy for integrating that uh, is to use the trig substitution, so I'm going to set up a triangle. And when you do this enough times, you start being able to kind of go through these motions pretty quickly without having to think too hard about each step. So it does get faster as you go. The Neither the x nor the 2, if you remember that is 2 squared, neither one of those is the hypotenuse because they're being added together, which means they can't be the biggest side. So the square root of x plus 4 is the hypotenuse. I'll put my x as my opposite leg and my 2 as my adjacent leg. So um, the tangent of theta is equal to x over 2, which means dx is equal to 2 secant squared theta, theta. And while we're at it, we can say that the uh, secant of theta on its own is equal to the square root of x squared plus 4, that's the hypotenuse, divided by 2. And so the x squared plus 4 without the square root on top of it, because that's what I need to substitute out, is the square of that. So 4 secant squared theta is equal to plain old x squared plus 4. And so now we can do our substitutions. So this is minus the integral of my dx becomes 2 secant squared theta d theta. And my x squared plus 4 becomes 4 secant squared theta d theta. No, there's no d theta on that one. Sorry. And so move on to the next line here. Our first terms, the x cubed over 3 and 3x, those are done. We're not touching those again. The integral of du over u is just the ln of the absolute value of u. And then the integral of 
2 secant squared theta d theta over 4 secant squared theta. Well, we can see there's a 1 half there. It's 2 over 4. And the secant squares will cancel out. So it's just one, the integral of 1 half theta, which is, sorry, the integral of 1 half d theta is just 1 half theta. Let's see. And what I can do now is put in my substitution for u, put that back in, and I have to figure out what theta is equal to, but if we said earlier that the tangent of theta is equal to x over 2, that means theta by itself is equal to the arctangent of x over 2. And we can finish this up. This should be our last step. Put in the original u that back in is x squared plus 4 into the ln, and take the theta and replace that with arctangent of x over 2. Remember that's still over 2. And that is the integral that we started with, which was x to the fourth plus 7x squared plus 2x plus 11 over x squared plus 4 in respect.